Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. A lot of crazy things are going on. The whole world is uh, coming to a point of the rapture. Uh, we're seeing it everywhere around us. There is no mistaking what's happening. All these things have been happening. We cannot say that any seals are open yet because these things that we've seen have been happening since the beginning of time, since they were kicked out of the garden. So what we want to do is use discernment, read the Bible, um, understand where we are and what's coming. <clears throat> and I want to go through that. That 1111 does not stop happening. It keeps happening. And even in my last video, like right now I'm recording, I don't have a time counter on there. I have no idea um, what time is elapsing as I make videos. I only, you know, more or less look at my watch as to when I start and know how long it's been going on. So I wanted to show you something. And everybody, a lot of people showed me this. You see down there at the bottom over the 17, that video lasted 33 minutes and 33 seconds. <clears throat> I've been seeing 333 quite a bit. So I said to myself, self, let me go on the timeline and take a look and see if there's anything that represents 33 at all. And this is what I found. We are now, uh, this is the 18th, we are now on a DAR 4 according to the Enoch timeline, starting the year on the day of equal parts, like Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in the day while discussing the date Lazarus died? Lazarus died on March the, 6th, uh, the March the 16th, the day of equal parts. Two days prior to that, since it took two days to walk to where Jesus was, Mary and Martha sent a messenger to him to let him know that Lazarus was sick. The messengers did not know that Lazarus was sick. On March the 14th, they walked to see Jesus. On March the 16th, they reached Jesus. Jesus admits that Lazarus has died and are there not 12 hours in the day? This is a clue in the Bible to tell us what day it was. On March the 16th, he did not move. Let's go back here. Whoops. Let's go back over here. On March the 16th, the day of equal parts, Lazarus died. This is the only day on planet Earth anywhere, but mostly in Jerusalem. It varies around the planet, but mostly in Jerusalem, this is the day of equal parts. This is a day where there are 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night on March the 16th. Every single year. It's been happening since the creation of time. I can go as far as on time and date to 2600, 600 years from now, and it's still March the 16th. Now, they arrive at Jesus on March the 16th. They tell him that Lazarus is sick. As far as they know, Lazarus is sick. The messengers got word from Mary and Martha to go and tell Jesus that his friend, his very good friend, is sick. And when they arrive, they think he's sick. But when they arrive on March the 16th, the day Jesus says, are there not 12 hours in a day, Jesus admits to his apostles that Lazarus, in fact, has died. And yet he waited for two days. Why does he wait for two days? Because he knows that God changed the law, because he is God, the law was changed, that Rosh Hashanah is no longer on September the 15th, the other day that the fourth star of Algenib skirts along the horizon. The fourth star of Algenib also skirts along the horizon in Jerusalem on March the 16th and September the, actually 14th, 182 days away. Jesus does not move because it is New Year's Day. It is Rosh Hashanah. They are supposed to be blowing trumpets on this day, but they are not because they have not obeyed the New Year. This is where the New Year begins on March the 17th. Jesus sat still for two days. Two days later, after he sits still for two days, he walks to Lazarus. It takes him two days to get there. On March the 20th, Lazarus is resurrected by Jesus, and Jesus cries. Why does he cry? 
Why does Jesus cry? Because he is crying over Israel. Israel has seen the most incredible, miraculous thing happen. Who could do such a thing? Who on planet Earth could do such a thing as to raise somebody who had died four days earlier and have him come out of the grave? Who could do such a thing? Only God himself could do such a thing. Jesus Christ is God Almighty in the flesh, came here because only he, when you want to do something right, you do it yourself. Only he could come here and die for the sins of the whole world. Just like in John 3.16. And a lot of people have noticed that John 3.16, March 16th. And I've shown you that on the Gregorian calendar, what's crazy is that in spite of them changing it and moving around uh, like they did and, and making January 1st in the middle of winter, I mean, no, no, there would be no reason in the world to use January 1st as the beginning of the year, but God used their wicked for good. And on March the 17th, St. Patrick's Day is the first day of the year, which is why Jesus sat still for two days. And we go down here to where we are now. And when you start there, by the way, when you start there, it's a, such a simple count. Anyone can do it. I don't think it needs to be that convoluted and that difficult to figure out the calendars. I don't think we have to have, uh, we have to be watching the moon or, or, or any, you can't even watch the constellations because of the progression of the sun. The sun does not stay on March 16th, the day of equal parts. The sun still ticks like, like a hour hand out of place uh, on March the 16th. In the year of creation, the day was equal, but the sun was in the constellation of the twins. Um, I'm going to forget the constellation for a second, but I'll remember it. But in that constellation, in the constellation of the bull, right between the bullhorns, when the flood happened, and it was in the constellation of the Lamb when Jesus was here, and now it is the constellation of the two fishes. It has moved, but the day of equal parts has never changed since the beginning nor until the end of the millennium. We are coming into the age of Aquarius now. In the age of Aquarius is where the sun will be during the thousand years. The heavens tell a beautiful story of... Um, creation, uh, God together with man, and the the, uh, the flood, and Jesus coming to save us from our sins, God Almighty, and the two fishes, Pisces being um, the two different groups, the bride and the wife, and, uh, and the Jews also going through the millennium. Here at the bottom, Nisan has 30 days, Iyar has 30 days, Sivan has 31 days. When you do this count, and I do it on the Jewish timeline. I do not do it on the Gregorian timeline. I count Nisan 30. If I want to know what Tammuz 15 is, I simply go Nisan, Ayar, Sivan, adds up to 91 days, and then I add 15 days to that date of 91, and that would be 101, 115, right? 116, 116. So I would simply go down here 116 days, Whatever that lands on, a couple days before Av 1, and then I take Nissan, I'm sorry, uh, uh, March 17th is the head of the year, and I add 116 days to it, and it tells me on the Gregorian calendar where it lands, and I've done that throughout all this. And imagine my surprise as I go through all of this that, in fact, the first day of the year is a green day. It's St. Patrick's Day, and I go on down through time, and on the days we would think are not very important turn out to be super important on the Gregorian calendar. Creation started on 911. Satan basically laughed at God's face when he brought down the Twin Towers on 911. That's a very important day. Time was created on September the 14th that we all exist within. We cannot exist outside of time. We go on down, and we see October the 31st, Halloween. What a, what a perfect day for the flood to begin. Halloween night, November the 1st, October the 31st. Halloween begins. We go on down, and we land on Christmas Day when Mary conceives. These are all 
simple mathematics. Now, people are trying to put the flood on the second month and 17th day according to the current calendar, but that is not accurate. The flood happened previous to the calendar change in Exodus 12. So the head of their year would have been back here on September the 14th or 15th, the uh, fourth star of Algin upskirts along the horizon uh, on September the 14th. And on the 15th is the head of the year. 15 days later, 14 days later, Jesus is born. 14 days after the head of the year when it was supposed to be changed, Jesus is crucified. So he comes into this world and then offset by six months exactly to the day, 182 days, which is why up here I've written. And, and this part, I still don't know. Whoops, I did it again. This part up here, I still don't know for certain, but it would appear and I could be wrong, but we know that the temple came down in 70 AD and Jesus uh, would have had to have gone to the cross on 30 AD because of that 40 years after he went to the cross. Um, 3 BC is where he was born. He was born on September the 29th and March 30th, 182 days later, 33 years and 182 days later, he would have gone to the cross. So, what am I talking about? The 33, 33, 33. Look at this. Purim is 11 months and 11 days from the head of the year, from March 17th. It is 11, month, uh, 11 months and 11 days for the Jewish timeline from Nisan 1 to Adar 14. Nisan 1, uh, beginning on March 17th. This is Purim. It, Purim last is, uh, occurs 30 days before the cross and 30 days after the cross is the second Passover. So you have three and three, 30 and 30. The zeros don't count. So you have 30 days after Purim, you come to the uh, cross, and 30 days after that, you have the second Passover. Mm -hmm. You go back 30 days and you land on the Festival of Trees. And if you go back another 30 days, you land on the day that John leapt in the womb, excited about Jesus as Mary travels to see her. It takes her seven days to get there. She gets there on New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. And John is so excited that she's there. She is now seven days pregnant, and John recognizes her, which is why we know that life begins at conception, exactly at conception. John would not have recognized Jesus in the womb, who had only been there for seven days and leapt in the womb, if Jesus was nothing more than uh, whatever, a pile of goo, whatever, they, whatever they're saying it is. I don't pay attention to it because I don't believe in it for a second. So that's what led me to look at the 30-day thing. I, I could not believe that 30 days prior and 30 day, another 30 days and 60 days prior and then 30 days after and 60 days after perfectly aligns up with 3333. Three, three. Right in the middle of all of those threes is Purim, which just happens to be 11 months and 11 days from the head of the year. So it is, for me, very compelling to look at February 28th. Have you noticed that what we're seeing right now are like contractions? I was saying before the earthquakes happened how quiet it seemed to be. Not a lot going on. Not a lot of stuff happening. And then all of a sudden, one of the biggest earthquakes we've ever seen rocked this, the country of Turkey and Syria. It was incredible. And here we are again, and I, I'm feeling the same way. It's, it's kind of quiet, and not a lot is going on. So we're still watching. All right, I wanted to, I wanted to do this real quick. I just want to show you something. This is, seems to be a big issue with people. And it's, I think, I think it's easier to understand than than what we're than what we're saying. Okay, so if you're a car, an auto mechanic, and then you're talking to somebody who has no clue about cars, is it not hard to explain to them about that car because they don't have a clue what you're saying and almost don't have an interest in what you're saying? If you're a brain surgeon and you're talking about brain surgery to somebody who doesn't do it, it's hard to talk to them because they don't understand what you're saying. If you are 
a rocket scientist and you're talking about the, this wonderful engine that'll do this and this and, and you're explaining it, they don't understand. They, they can't understand. So let's do this. Let me try to explain. And remember, and I don't want it to sound any kind of insulting way, but some people simply will not understand. And there's a reason for that. This is the lake of, oh, it's written backwards, so I shouldn't have done that. It's written backwards for you. This is the lake of fire. What are we saving people from? Saving them from the lake of fire. Are we saving them from the tribulation? And the answer is no. We are not here to save anyone from tribulation. Are we saving people from going into the millennium and living out a thousand years of peace with Jesus as the ruler? No, we're not saving anybody from that. Are we saving anyone from being the 144,000? And the answer is no. Here's our planet. It's green and blue, and it's our, it's our planet. Within our planet, we have all these people. So many people. Okay? All these people live on the planet. We are telling all these people about this event that's coming. Sometimes, because of the Holy Spirit, we are to plant the seeds. We are the ones who throw the seeds. We are not the seeds. The seeds are the Word of God. The seeds are salvation. Where the seeds land, that's not up to us. Where the seeds develop and grow, that's up to God. God is the creator of life, not us. So we, in here we have all of these people that finally listen. They finally listen and they hear. Can you see that? It's kind of small. But they finally listen. And then you have these other people who also kind of listen. There's so many of them. They've heard, and they've heard, but they haven't reacted, okay? Now, there's a passage in the Bible that makes the statement that they will be, how does it, how is it worded? That they will be, there will be a, um, I'm going to forget. There will be a falling away. There it is. There it is. There will be a great falling away. What does that mean? Does that mean that all these people in red here are going to stop believing? How about all the ones in green? Are they, they have something, but they, they don't quite grasp what's going on. Uh, it's like teaching, um, you know, rocket scientists to the uh, rocket rockets to them and they can't quite grasp it. You have these others that don't even care. They don't even begin to care. They, they could care less as far as they're concerned. Um, we weren't created. Uh, the planet's just going to keep on going. When you die, your, your, uh, your light gets snuffed out and you're done. So you, there is no heaven. What would you call a great falling away? All these people, let's see if I can spell heaven backwards. Did I do it? Ooh, look at that. That was not bad. That's me writing backwards. There's a great falling away. All of these reds are going to fall away. They will no longer be here. If you were here on this planet at this moment when we all left, there is no more. It is a falling away. They're gone. They're not here anymore. If you were standing from the perspective of God himself and you saw the light of the world be taken away and gone in one second and they were gone, you would say they fell away. They're gone. They're not here anymore. There will be nobody making videos. There will be nobody believing. Imagine everyone who uh, makes videos every day and works on this every day uh, saying that, uh, you know, hold on, let me turn the light back on. Okay, I can see a little bit better. Saying that, you know, there's, there's, there's nobody here anymore. They have been taken away. They're gone. Don't worry. 
soon as they're gone, just like Elijah and Elisha. Elisha did not believe, but Elijah, he said, but if you see me go, if you witness this event, God will send a double portion. And so they are going to start their dispensation after that. This is hard to explain to somebody who is not understanding this part of it. And they and it's almost like they cannot. And, and I'm not, like I said, if you don't understand it, keep studying and keep trying to understand it. But this is the catching away. This is the falling away. This, this once they're gone, they're only... People here that are left are some people who kind of understand and kind of say, well, there must be something, and those that don't believe anything at all. But guess what's going to happen during that period of time? Because the Bible says that in seal six, in seal, uh, I think it's, no, no seals. Before the seals, we see John caught up to heaven. What does he witness? He witnesses those casting their crowns. Who are those? They are from every tribe and every nation and every group of people on the face of the earth they're from all of those people the 24 no matter how many times somebody tries to explain to me the 24 they will never get to oh they were these people from the bible and they were these they are not from all tongues and all nations and all kindred they are not from everywhere around the planet from all the corners of the planet they are not from there you will see in the bible a sea of glass the sea of glass are those that are raptured out of here in um, Revelation 4. Then we're there. Then we see the seals begin to be opened. We are there. We are communicating with John. The 24 elders represent the bride. Then, after that, they will witness us go. And all of a sudden, there will be a great multitude, so many, they will take over all of this, so many that no man can count, and they will be raptured on seal six. All right, let's go back through the pictures, see if I can articulate this properly. All right, I noticed this. Um, I hadn't seen anybody talk about this, but I noticed this uh, when we were talking about the myrtle trees last time, and this is in Job 1, 7, and the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, from walking up and down in it. So I'm like, so who goes to and fro from the earth? Is there any discussion in the Bible of anyone coming back and forth between heaven and earth as they pleased? I haven't found it. We go back to Zechariah 1, 9. Then said I, O my Lord, what are these? And the angels that talked with me said unto me, I will show thee what these be. And the men that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are they. Remember when the Bible says they. It's usually the, 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 uh, the evil ones, not us, they. They, the, that's those people. These are they whom the Lord hath sent to and fro through the earth. There's that to and fro. Remember when Satan sinned, many angels were cast out, one third of them, as a matter of fact. Um, there was a whole bunch of them cast out, and they're down here, and they're running this planet right now, and, and, and Jesus wants his planet back. He wants his people back. And they answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees and said, What have walked to and fro through the earth? And behold, uh, we have walked to and fro through the earth. And behold, all the earth sitteth still and is at rest. So you have the another passage. There is a moment in time where the earth will be still and is at rest. In other words, I believe this moment is where the last of the bride has woke up to understanding that salvation is of the Lord, lest any man shall boast. There is no works behind it. Those who say that you must work before, during, or after your salvation are categorically wrong. You will work, and that is the proof. That's the fruit. That's the evidence of who you are. You are not going to do it. I don't do this because I feel like I'm getting saved. 
I don't do this because I'm contributing or maintaining my salvation in any kind of way. This is evidence, and all of you will have the same evidence. There are things that you did that you are no longer interested in whatsoever. Did you know, I found this off of God a Minute's Facebook. There's a couple of good Facebooks out there. You have God a Minute's Facebook. You have Looking Up. She has a wonderful Facebook. And you have Ecro, is it Ecro Symphony? I think Ecro Symphony. I believe Ecro Symphony has a Facebook. I'm not sure. Uh, sorry about that. I'll have to uh, go look. But there's a child, five-year-old child. After 112 hours under the ruins, this five-year-old child was questioned by by journalist uh, A. Habara. Are you hungry? He answered, and I quote, sometimes someone dressed in white came to feed me and give me water. Now, five-year-old child does not lie Five-year-old child could not survive 112 hours under those ruins. Somebody in white came to feed him and give him water. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. There's that 11-11 again. It just keeps coming up. I paused a movie that I was watching with my family, and that number came up. I can't see that number, obviously, until you pause, and then it tells you how much time is left in the movie. Three minutes and 33 seconds. Who created the planet? Who was it? It, uh, sorry, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So we now know that the Word is God himself. The same was in the beginning with God. It's telling you that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all one. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Our finite minds cannot even begin to conceive of an almighty God, but I can promise you, uh, you're going to be happy that he is almighty and omnipotent and everywhere and that he cannot make a mistake. It's not within him to do so. We can't even conceive of him. Uh, it would take us 2,500 eternities to try to even uh, scratch the surface of what God is, and we just can't comprehend in our finite understanding. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The darkness does not understand uh, what Jesus is. They didn't understand. If Satan had known, he would not have crucified him on the cross. But God knew that Satan would mess up like he always has. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, that's one, with the voice of the archangel, that's two, and with the trump of God, that's three. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. So each time there is a shout, then there is the voice of an archangel, and there is a trump. This is where I believe we have more than one rapture. And each time during the end of each dispensation, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we be forever with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. We comfort one another with these words. How comforting is it for me to tell you that nobody is going to go to heaven before the tribulation? That is not comforting at all. There is a bunch of people that are going to heaven in a pre tribulation rapture, which will occur any moment. Any moment now it's going to occur. Now, this is the parable of the sower, and I want you to notice it's the same in all three, in Luke, Mark, and Matthew. Luke, uh, all gospel, all, all the words in this Bible are good for everyone to read, but not all of it is speaking directly to your uh, dispensation. God had to put, he said in the very end of the Bible, do not add to the words of this book and do not take any words away. So everything we need to know is here. I believe that Amos 3, 7, where God will tell us, is already written in the book. We just don't understand it yet. Any more than they understood when Jesus was coming last time, any more than we understood 
1335 just happens to fall perfectly on the Dome of the Rock after the first temple is destroyed, I believe is where it started. I'll have to do, I'll have to take a look at that, but I believe that's it. Or I think from the Dome of the Rock till now, I have to look at that. I'm not sure. Other people have done wonderful math on that, but that event is done. And we didn't know it and couldn't know it. Who knew that Israel was going to become a nation after 2,000 years? How many of you are from, like myself, my generations came from other countries, We're not from this country, but I don't speak their language. I don't hold their customs. I don't know much about them. I'm an American and I've been here since birth and they came here from other countries. Do I, uh, do I speak their languages? No, I don't. I kind of assimilated into the American culture. What other race of people on planet Earth, I can take you right now to, um, to Mexico. I mean, sorry, to uh, Texas. And uh, well, my wife's a perfect example. She's uh, half Mexican and uh, she looks Latin. She doesn't speak any Spanish. Um, she's, I think, she would be second generation here, third generation here. Not anything wrong with that. What I'm saying is the Jews held on to their culture, their language, their writings, everything about themselves for 2,000 years, what a miracle. I mean, what an absolute miracle. How is that even conceivable that they were able to do such a thing? You know, um, it's incredible that they did that, but they did, and they came back into their land in 1948, and the Bible told us that was going to happen, and it did, and it, it happened just like the Bible said it would. Down here at the bottom, this is the parable of the sower. He's talking about the seeds. Now, the seeds are the word of God. Okay, the soil is is the one who understands and is uh, is soaks up the knowledge. I guess it has the moisture. The sower went outside to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. So he told everybody, those on the wayside, he told those who um, uh, were in the rocks, he told uh, those who. Uh, Everywhere where the seed did not grow, they still heard. They just cast it away. They just didn't want it. They didn't want to hear it. So you have this sower went out to sow his seed, and he sowed. Some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls in the air devoured it. That's their salvation. That was just given to them, but they didn't want it. And some fell on the rock, and as soon as it sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And uh, other fell on the good ground and sprang up and bare fruit and hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried. Jesus, only in the Gospel of Luke, while discussing the parable of the sower, cried. He cried over Israel when Lazarus was resurrected. He cried for his beloved wife that he loves, but they will not believe. They will not listen. They do not have ears to hear. They do not understand. And down here I wanted to show you, it is not written that he cried. He brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100 and he has said to them, he that hath ears, let him hear. Same thing over here in Matthew. That was Mark. This is Matthew. But of this fell on good ground about forth fruit, some a hundredfold, sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. He who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Okay. All right. So I want to get back into this, and this is so sticky to uh, to to have anybody understand such a sticky situation to understand. The seeds are the word of God. Some people will not hear it. Some people hear it and they kind of respond, yeah, I had a, but then they fall right back into the lifestyle. Some people hear it and they start going to church. They start doing all of these things, all of these works that they feel like they need to do. And then some people hear it and they have works because they are saved. They just do it. I'm a different person today than when I was saved. I really am. I'm a much, there's a lot of things that I wouldn't do. But let me ask you this. Can, 
seed that's in the good soil tell itself to go into the bad soil? Can the seed, I don't know which way this is for you, can these jump into here and die? The answer is no. They are planted. They are done. Can these jump over here and live? On the new word, yes, they can. That's like I said, it's very sticky to teach that because you can be saved. All you have to do is accept Christ and the evidence and the proof of it will be your reaction and action uh, after that. And it won't be uh, forced. It'll be something that you'll you just... You, you'll know it, you'll feel it, you'll know it. And teaching that is a very difficult thing. But once you are saved, you cannot unplant yourself. This plant cannot, it will not do it. I, I could do it, but it will not do it by itself. It will not leave this good soil and jump into this rocky soil to die. It will not do it. God used the seed as an example of the word and where the seed fell. The seed fell good here. It fell very good. Here the seed fell bad. It didn't grow. It started to grow a little bit, but then it died. So, no, you can't lose your salvation. Once you have it, it cannot be lost. However, the question is, were you ever saved in the first place? And it's not my judgment to say whether anybody was saved or not saved. It's in the, it, it, the the proof is in the pudding. It's in the fruit. It's in it's in it's in you know your desire, and it's not your desire now. It's it's what happens to you afterwards. I know a lot of people, and I tell them about this, and they literally could care less. They literally will tell me, I I, I don't care. I, I I'll, I'll wait and see what happens. I don't believe it until I see it. They're like Thomas in the upper room. That's a huge group of people. It's a lot of people. Um. But they can't, I, I do believe that, that, that uh, the seeds can't be moved, but I believe in new seeds. And I believe God can turn your rocky soil into soil and you will grow and develop from there. That's, that, that's good. This rocks can turn into soil and this can grow into this because, because God. So let me get back into the pictures. According as he hath chosen... In him, this is Ephesians 1, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ himself. What is that saying? Let's find another one. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be firstborn, this is the bride, among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate them, he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Now, a lot of people will use those verses out of context, and I'm going to make it real simple. Um, we are finite human beings stuck in time. We're stuck in linear time. And as far as we can see, I, I can't look at anybody else and say, yes, you're saved based on what you're saying or based on what you're doing. You're saved. I can't do that because it's not my place. I don't know. I can't tell you that you're not saved. But the wonderful thing about Worshiping an almighty God like Jesus Christ is that he was here before the foundations of the world. And he will be here for all eternity. And time means nothing to him whatsoever. So when he says you were predestined, it's not that he decided you're going to hell and you're going to hell. He didn't do that. But to us, we were given every opportunity. He already knows. He's God. He's God. He already knows. He already knew what you were going to do before you did it. So define the word predestined. Did he just, you know, look forward and say, I'll pick this one, this one, this one, and this one, and uh, the rest of them, you know, they can go to hell. No. He gave you 
the word. He gave you the opportunity. He gave it to all of us. Some of you will respond. Some of you will not. He knew that in advance. He knew that in advance and wrote your name down in advance because he already knew that. He is, if he were not an almighty, all-powerful, omnipotent, all seen, all everywhere, all out of time, uh, the creator of this universe, if he were not all that, he's not worth worshiping. He's all that. And if he did not know anything, if there was something he did not know, then he could not be God. He knew everything in advance, and he knew who would respond and who would not respond. Salvation is of the Lord. Nobody comes to the Lord unless the Father draw him. Salvation is all of the Lord. It's like in the in the uh, Galilean wedding, the groom hands the cup to the bride. The cup was gotten by the groom. It, uh, the, the groom. It was filled with um, wine by the groom. The celebration was put together by the groom. Everything that was there was done by the groom. The only thing. And and all of that was done by the groom. The only thing she had to do was drink from that cup. Can she go to heaven and say, well, I drank from the cup. That's why I'm saved. I decided to. No. You don't drink from the cup unless it's, unless it's offered to you. It's not offered to you if you would ever refuse the cup. It's a, it's a real, tight, uh, real tight understanding. All right, let's keep on reading. Romans 8. For whom... Oh, I already read that one. I think this is another one, predestined, yeah. Okay, this is similar to what I showed you on the board just now. Um, We have the bride up at the top. We have the 144,000 virgin Jewish males that will learn a new song that nobody else can sing. We have the saints. These are the ones that go in seal six. The bride is the crystal, is the uh, sea of crystal. Um, that cast their crowns before any seals open. This moment is about to occur. And at the end, there's a whole group of people. They are gathered. They are not raptured. They are gathered. Uh, They're the ones from the threshing room floor. They've gone through all of it, but they're carried into the millennium to be tempted. They're still human. They're still temptable. They will inherit the earth, and uh, they will uh, go through the millennium and uh, be tempted again at the very end. We're saving people, not from these four groups up here at the top. We're saving them from this group down at the bottom, the lake of fire. Um, What goes in the lake of fire at the very end of the thousand years? The earth does, heaven does, Satan does. A third of those angels that already have fallen do, and all the wicked go into the lake of fire. We are to warn everybody about this lake of fire. I don't believe we're supposed to warn anybody about the tribulation. I think the tribulation is a different dispensation that God basically has given a second chance. And many, 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 a group so great, no man can count, will appear in heaven. They will have washed their robes white. They will be carrying palm branches. And it'll be a group so large that no man could count. It's going to be a huge number. And they will come out of tribulation. That's what happens at seal six. Okay, this is my favorite verse. It's on the wall behind me all the time. And it reminds me that God is incomplete. If I were in control whatsoever of my own salvation, I would fail and wind up in hell. I am not in control of my own salvation. God is in complete control of salvation. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up in the last day. And the last day would be the last day of any dispensation. It could be the last day of the dispensation for the bride, the dispensation of grace. It could be the last day of um, the seven years. It could be the last day of the millennium. It could be uh, any one of those last days. Uh, Philippians 1.6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, remember, um, God will not save you and then take your salvation away based on your actions. Your actions will determine whether or not you were ever saved in the first place. 
and I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about these preachers who started a church and now are billionaires on the backs of the people that they worship to, and then they make comments like, if you're not rich, it's because you're not saved. It's horrible, absolutely horrible. That's just uh, not even true. God would have blessed you if you were actually saved. It's just the most, it goes completely against the gospel. None of that stuff. And they're going to see when they're here for that uh, seven-year tribulation, when they're left here, they're going to see exactly um, everything they had will be burned up and they'll be running around the streets hungry like everybody else, rich, poor, Free man and bond, um, king and peasant, all of them running in the streets together, trying to make it through that seven years. It'll be rough on them, but they'll realize that their works had nothing to do with it. Happy Purim, and then I made a mistake there with that. So, anyway, I just wanted to come on here. Uh, that's a sticky situation to go through. Um, as far as understanding salvation and how it works, and a lot of people have a million questions. I hope I answered some of those questions for you. Uh, once the plant begins to grow, it cannot be moved. You cannot lose something. It's already growing in good soil. It's not going to go anywhere. You cannot lose your salvation. But new seeds during a different dispensation, can be thrown and cause this one to grow. And once it starts growing and becomes this, it cannot lose it. This plant, tell, plant, jump out of this pot right now and jump over there into the other pot with the rocks. Yeah, it's not going to do it. The plant's here, and that's where it's going to stay. It's not moving. And that's why God used the parable of the sower for everyone to understand. There is no instance in that parable where the seed was able to move. It went where it was supposed to go, but it went. Nobody can say not everybody got a seed. Everybody got the gospel. It went everywhere, but some people just won't listen. They're stone. But during the next dispensation, during the dispensation of tribulation, I have a feeling that God is going to change that rock into good soil and more seeds will be planted and they will grow up and be good for fruit for everyone. So go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody. And accept the Lord into your heart. Um, we're watching the world come unglued. It's coming unglued. Um, we're about to see some major events go on uh, over the next uh, months, maybe days, maybe hours. I don't know, but... Every single day, something big is coming along. So keep watching, keep praying. The Bible says to pray. It will not save you. It will not continue to save you. Once you're saved, you're saved. Praying will save you. I said that wrong. Praying will not maintain your salvation. You cannot lose something. Jump out of the pot. Yeah, it's not going to jump going to stay right there because it's growing and it's not going to go anywhere. You can't stop uh, God's plan. I can tell you that. If we could, we'd all be in big trouble. We can't stop God's plan. But the question is, a little bit grew. Something did grow. You had the appearance of being saved, but withered and died. Didn't fall on good soil. So keep that in mind. And I pray this bless you. It was a very difficult video to do. It's very difficult to explain that um, to everyone. Uh, hopefully the, uh, the plant thing worked and you can see what I'm talking about. And uh, so like, comment, share, and subscribe. And um, we'll chat with you again later. Maybe. Maybe Purim is it. What is this, the 18, 10 more days?